Hi all, my name is Jeff Hewlett. I'm a decision confidence builder. I'm a behavioral economist and have been in banking and financial services for most of my career. I'm also a faculty member at James Madison University and I'm a personal finance author. In our last vidcast, we introduced part one of the car buying process and building confidence. In today's presentation, we explore part two of that same car buying process. This process is essential for building your decision confidence. Car buying is surprisingly complex. Auto buying has many criteria in deciding what is important to you. Plus, there are thousands of potential alternatives and financing questions. Then, negotiating with the salesperson adds even more spice. Car buying is one of many important life decisions benefiting from a consistent, repeatable decision process. Here is one of my happy car buying friends. She used my book, Making Choices, Making Money, and the smartphone tools to make a great car buying decision. Now, we jump into part two of the seven step car buying process. In part one, we discuss helpful resources, including choice architecture tools like Definitive Choice and our auto buying workflow. We also went through lenders, lender and car data aggregators, and my book and other content. As a recommendation, we suggest you first go through the entire process without exploring the details. The important first step to car buying success is building a mental map of the entire car buying process. Once you get the feel for the forest, it will make more sense to learn about each tree or in this case, the individual steps of that car buying process. Loading the smartphone app we recommend is also helpful at this point. It, it's, a good, it's good to start familiarizing yourself with the app and some of the other resources before jumping into car buying mode. Also, please refer back to this vidcast and the website materials or my book. Some concepts may make more sense after you get some hands-on experience. In part one, we discuss the first three process steps, including anchoring your car buying purses, purpose, evaluating your preferences and initial costs, and then third, getting pre-approved for your car financing. Today, we begin at step four, right halfway through that car buying process. Developing car buying alternatives, first, consider cars with a super good maintenance history. In the world of negotiation, another name for a car buying alternative is a BATNA. Never heard of that word before? It's kind of a funny word. It's actually an acronym. BATNA stands for Best Alternative to a Negotiated Agreement, BATNA. You always want to build a portfolio of multiple alternatives or BATNAs to build your negotiating position. The, the purpose of a BATNA is actually more around our negotiation psychology. Right? So if one car does not work out, it should not feel like a big deal to go on to the next car, car alternative on the list. It's that BATNA that will give you that feeling of being able to walk away and not feeling too boxed in. Car alternatives with good maintenance histories demonstrate a lower cost of ownership. In the Car Buying Workflow program, we suggest several models and websites with good maintenance history suggestions. From my experience, you may want to minimize car providing, car provided car technology. Car tech falls into the hidden cost category mentioned earlier. Car tech is expensive to buy, expensive to maintain, and your smartphone with a car radio Bluetooth connection likely has much of the needed navigation. Plus, your smartphone is likely a much more reliable technology server. Why pay for tech twice? Also, please see our article called Negotiating Success and Building Your BATNA for neg Negotiating Tips and the Importance of Building Car Buying Alternatives or BATNAs. Also, please see a good car buying approach is good for the environment. That's also in a, another um, article. For This is how pollution may be considered when buying a car. Please see the Curiosity Vine, my website, for these articles. Step five, curate your car data. Finally, it is time to visit the car seller. And I wanna emphasize this point, we're at step five, and it's the first time we've walked onto a lot. 
order of operations matters. You now have a rank ordered list of preference weighted and lower CPRM cars that are all within your budget. Start at the top of the list. Your primary mission when discussing a specific car with a seller is to validate the information. Validate key car information and the highest weighted preference information that we revealed in step two. Those are your benefits that you use the app to help you clearly understand. This information may have been originally provided on websites, car buying aggregators provided by salespeople or others. While information providers like True Cars or, or Cars.com or others attempt to monitor and oversee the car data providers, the data is not always accurate. If using the app we discuss, you may use it like a little decision concierge and you update it as you go along this validation step. Next, we discuss a pre-purchase inspection. This is a key step for the data curation. Now, if you want to take a deeper dive, please see our car buying best practices. This is an article out on that same web website, and it helps with a process to help you curate car buying information. And plus, we'll discuss best practices in our next vidcast. Step six, obtain a pre-purchase inspection. If all the other information validates so far, now is time to go on a test drive. Now this test drive has a very specific purpose. It's one to confirm if you like it, how it drives and the car meets expectations. This is pretty important. This is where you get the feel for the car. You listen to the car, you smell the car, you smell four things that may not seem normal. You listen to things that may not be quite normal, but this is an important validation step for sure. But there's another very important part of this test drive, and that is to drive it to a trusted mechanic for a used car inspection. A car inspection may not be necessary for new cars, but is absolutely recommended for a used car. This is the final step when you are pretty sure a particular car alternative is the one. You will likely need to pay a small inspection fee, and it is worth every penny. At this point, the prospective car should meet your CPRM needs, your total cost needs, and other preference criteria discussed in the article. The decision tools suggested in the article help you to be confident this car is the one. This is the final pre preparatory step. You are now ready to negotiate with the car seller and close the deal. Now for a deeper dive, please check out our car buying best practices article for the process, including leveraging the inspection information to negotiate with the seller. We will discuss best practices also in the next vidcast. Remember, it is still okay to walk away at this point. Remember, you have other alternatives. I have done this before when the inspection ended up turning up a deal killer. All right, now we are on step seven. This is at the end of the process now. Now we're ready to negotiate and close like a pro. This individualized choice architecture is designed to provide negotiation confidence. That's what this process is all about. Determining the best car alternatives and negotiating with the seller is a game of information leverage. If you follow this car buying process, your negotiations will feel confident and natural. Below, we suggest tools to help you take control and obtain information leverage. Your CPRM and preference information from your other alternatives will help you confidently understand your negotiating, your negotiating and walk away price. Remember, you understand not only this car, but where the other cars are from a CPRM standpoint. The suggested tools enable you to architect and control your own decision process. And then now let's talk a little bit about electric, ve electric vehicles. You may ask, does this approach work for electric cars like EVs? The answer is absolutely. You will need to adjust the car models we suggested in the, in the car buying workflow. EV technology is advancing rapidly. Now, interestingly enough, used EV car batteries may not last as long as newer EV car batteries. I would be sure to understand the likely battery life and any remaining battery wa warranty. As of the writing of this article, when using the CPRM method, I have found that used EVs are not as cost effective as internal combustion um, engines or ICE. 
though a combination of rapidly improving technology and don't forget the government subsidies I expect EVs to quickly come down the marginal cost curve probably over the next decade or so now for a deeper dive I do talk about EV alternatives you can see the um, you can see the article the best used electric cars and you can find this on my website as well this wraps up part two for the car buying process and building decision confidence in the next vidcast we will finish the car series by exploring best practices we will discuss developing your batnas updating car information using trusted mechanics how to negotiate price and developing your car sources as always achieving conviction in your confidence and great personal finance outcomes starts with a consistent repeatable decision process car buying is one of the many great examples and can be helpful for routinizing your personal finance decision process check out my book for suggestions and tools to help you create a lifetime of great personal finance decisions but until next time You've got this.